So I think you'll be surprised what the number one reason for leaving the Catholic Church is. Hey guys, it's John here in my studio, and I wanted to hop on and talk about this video I just watched with interviewing three priests talking about why people were leaving the Catholic Church. Now, not too recently, I did a video on a study done by the Baptist Church about why people are leaving. Their number one answer of why they're leaving was uh, the treatment of the LGBTQ communities. When these three Catholic priests sat down to talk, to talk about the number one reason why people were leaving the Catholic Church, they were talking about all their own experiences. And a lot of the same topics came up. You know, there was a lack of community. There was a lack of integrity with their, with their priests and their, and their, their ministers. There was, um, there was scandal with the, the um, pedophilia stuff and how it was covered up, how that came out. There's a lot of people who are not into that. But the number one reason why the people were leaving the Catholic Church really shocked me when I heard it. And I wanted to hop on and talk about this because the number one reason was marriage. The number one reason was marriage. Why would marriage become the, the, the main reason why people were leaving the Catholic Church? The Catholic doctrines on marriage are very strict. Number, number one, they believe that in the Catholic Church, marriage is, is a divine ordination by God himself. And so when you take your vow in front of God on the altar in the church, you have committed to this person for life. Biggest struggle the church is having is that 40 to 50 percent of marriages end in divorce. And people were really struggling with their faith because they were told they're supposed to stay with this person. My mother who had her master's degree in liturgy, head of liturgical doctrine in our church. You know, after my father died, she told me, if, had she not been Catholic, she would have divorced him years ago. So instead, they ended up living separate lives in the same house. She had, his, she had her living room, he had his living room. She would go read or play music, and he would, he would go in the living room and, and pass out or sleep on the couch or watch golf. And they, never had, they didn't have to have a good relationship with each other. The interesting thing is, is when you look at what the Catholic Church says, if you are married within the Catholic Church and you end up getting divorced, you are no longer allowed to have Eucharist. You're no longer allowed to take the body and blood of Christ. So that is the number one thing of the church is, is taking in the body and blood of Christ with the Eucharist. So you are not allowed. You are done. You're done doing that part of their entire instruction is that you are there to take in and get communion. That's the big thing. Go to church and get communion. Well, you're no longer allowed unless you go through this long process of proving that your first marriage was unlawful and having it uh, legally, Christ, you know, not legally as in the modern legal sense, but as in the church laws, legally annulled within the church so that it was considered an unlawful marriage. And that's why you had to prove through the annulment process it was unlawful marriage. Now, let's say you, you, you go through that process and you get back to taking Eucharist again, and you fall in love with somebody outside of the faith, and you get married to that person, but you don't have a Catholic ceremony. Guess what? You are no longer allowed to take the Eucharist because you broke the rules. You married somebody outside of the church, and I, in watching this video of these free priests talking, it really showed me a lot about, about how um, out of date the, the Christian teachings are, and especially the, the, what these priests were saying. One of them actually used the term, they fall into concubinage. They fall into concubinage. Now, the word concubine is... Um, a word that we in the modern modern time use as a woman on the side, a, a, a girlfriend, a, a mistress, concubine becomes that word. Ancient terminology meant being in a in an uh, 
cohabitation with someone of the opposite sex, you are in a concubinage. But the fact that the, the church itself is still using that as a terminology really shows you how, how behind the times they are. Um, they were talking about how bringing new people into the church and how they were, you know, First Communion and, and Confirmation and bapti- you know, Baptism, they're all good with that. And they get to, get to um, Confession, and they're all good with Confession. And then they get to, to the, the Sacrament of Marriage, and they say that is where they, they lose most of their new recruits, in the Sacrament of Marriage, because the majority of the people coming in have been divorced. They've, they've, they've left something else. They've, they've left their, their other communities. They've become, come into the church being divorced. Now they've got to have that other, other thing annulled. Well, they're saying, well, it, it wasn't in the Catholic Church, yes. But the Catholics think that marriage is before God. And so if you were married before you came into the Catholic, it wasn't that you weren't married in the Catholic Church. It was that you were married. And so that is, is a... Is a uh, Something that but that has to be annulled within the church for you to get have marriage in this. The other thing is is that if you get married to someone and it doesn't work out, you get stuck in it like my mom was, or you can you know or you divorce and then next thing you know you've got to go through that whole process of annulment and or you can, and you can no longer be uh, someone who can take communion because of those things. It, it really comes down to the control functions of what marriage is. Now, I have often said in many of my other videos about the idea of marriage being a, um, a method of creating more Catholics. It's really you get married to have children with more original sin. And if you don't have the inclination for the opposite sex, you have the holy orders, which means you're now going to go into the priesthood or, the, or become a nun. Because you don't have the inclination to have more children with uh, original sin for the church to turn into Catholics. So it comes down to this, this, this sticking point of marriage has so many different angles that people can't get behind. And people leave their marriage, you know, they're in a, in a church, they're going through their thing, they they having a rough time with their husband or wife and, and it's not working out and they decide they need to break it apart for their own for the love of themselves and for the love of everyone involved. And the church says, no, you have to suffer through it. You have to go through it. You have to hold on. You're supposed to be married for life because you, even God cannot put us under. That's in the, Bible, the book of Matthew, right? Once you've chosen your wife and your husband and you've cut and married, no one can, can break up that marriage. But, the, but it's a non-reality because in life, we're, we tend to fall in and out of those love relationships and those, those dynamic relationships. And you find tons of people who are holding on to marriages because of the church. And you find a lot of younger people coming up who are much happier and just, just living with, their, with the people they love and probably have better relationships without the, the confines of the trap of being married. It, it's really interesting to me because, you know, I've been married three times, and I am uh, um, a student of why people get divorced. Um, and the number one reason they get divorced is because they get into a marriage, and suddenly there's these new expectations of what marriage should be, of what marriage should be. They have these ideas that we're married now, so you have to do this, and you have to do this, and you have to do this, and you have to do this. And people are like, why can't we just live our lives and love one another and, and have that experience? But what happens is because of the expectations brought in by the, by the marriage itself, it changes. The reason I have three exes is because I did my best to meet the expectations of the people I was marrying. I, I literally stopped my careers at points and I, and I started doing things specifically to fulfill their, their expectations. And I was no longer the person they fell in love with. I was somebody different. And in my becoming someone different, that of course it was going to fall apart. But had I been so deliberately Catholic, I would have been stuck in that relationship just giving myself up for life. And you pro- I probably wouldn't be making YouTube videos right now. 
I probably wouldn't be, be living the life of joy and happiness that I live now because I would have been trapped in a, in a situation where I could not express myself authentically. So when people get to that point in marriage, people don't want to be stuck in a, a specific marriage for life. They want to love God. They want to have a relationship with God. But they don't want that to be stuck in a marriage because of God. And if they they break free of that and they get out and they start being happy again, then the church literally says, well, you can't have the communion because you broke the rules. And so it becomes this, this, this club that if you, unless you follow these rules, you're not with us. And so that's why the Catholic Church is failing is because they're so stuck on these antiquated ideas about, about relationships that have been proven wrong. You know, there's, there are certain species on earth that made for life. Humans aren't them. It, it, it's not the way it is with the human species. And people say, well, but I am. Well, that's a personal choice. That's a conscious choice. Most people have multiple partners in life. Most people I know have multiple partners in life, had multiple partners. We're in long relationships and short relationships. And the reality of it is, as long as they stay themselves, when, when the, the reality of it is, as long as they stayed themselves, then they were able to keep those relationships for a long time. But the expectations of what marriage is, specifically the religious expectations of what marriage is, gives them the, the structure that they have to now fight against to remain themselves. And so I found it really interesting that these three priests, their, their number one answer for why people were leaving the Catholic Church was marriage, and specifically the church's stance on marriage. People say they just can't live up to the rules. Well, they can't because it's not their nature. It's not our nature. And what I find, you know, if you can get into a, a beautiful, loving relationship and, and hold on to a partner who loves you and you just love each other to the end, that's amazing. It's beautiful. It's like Goldie Hawn and Kurt Russell. They've been together for almost 50 years, and they're just like kids when you see them together. They giggle. They laugh. They, they love one, one another. They never got married. They always remain themselves. And it's a matter of those expectations thrust upon us by religions can be the detriment to our entire quality of life. And like I said, my mother would have divorced my father years earlier had she not been Catholic. So it really comes down to are you going to allow a religious doctrine to hold you back from your happiness? Or... Or are you going to look at that and go, okay, I can't live, I can't live up to that expectation that the church is, is thrusting upon me. And because I can't live up to that expectation, the church is then going to deny me the Eucharist, which is the most important aspect of the church, is, is taking the body and blood of Christ, right? And so the church is saying, you have to follow us. You know, we're, we're guilting you into this. We're pushing you into this belief. And you have to do this if you want to be a part of the club. And that's why people are leaving the church. That's the number one reason why people are leaving. There are other reasons, of course, they're leaving. But that was the number one reason that these three priests came up with as to why people are leaving the church. The struggle with the church's stances about marriage. And I just wanted to come on and talk about this because I think it's a really interesting topic. But it's also a topic that really shows how, how archaic the churches themselves are. And I think that in the end, it ends up being a situation where they have these archaic ex explanations and these use of words like concubinage and things of that nature, which really shows. You know, it's like when they say you are a blasphemer. Well, what is a blasphemer? It's someone who is speaking against your faith. But if it's not your faith, they're not blaspheming. Because to be a blasphemer is a judgment that, they're, that they are just against us. They are against God because they don't believe the same as us. Same thing with, with, with concubinage. The use of the word is literally to mean, and the, the, his, no, the, definition, the dictionary definition is people, who co, people of opposite sex who cohabitate. But it's not the way it's used. A concubine is a mistress. And to say a concubinage is, is to make it dirty, to make it wrong. 
Well, guess what? Goldie Hawn and Kurt Russell are in a concubinage, and they're really happy. So it comes down to, is, are they right or is the church right? Well, the judgment and the anger and the, the um, deprivation of the Eucharist tells me the church isn't being loving, and Goldie and Kurt are. And so I'll go with what their, what their model is because they're, they're living a loving life with each other and sharing that love together. They found God. These people are trying to control it. And that's, that's my thought on this. You guys have a great day, and I'll talk to you soon. See you. Bye.